What is up fellow nerds and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel and today we're going to be talking about the very first subclass presented to the Artificer class which we discussed in last week's video and ranking all of its abilities on a scale of 1 to 10. So if you are excited to learn about all of the options available to this subclass make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already and of course down in the comments down below let me know what your favorite feature of the alchemist is i'd love i'd love to know it gets some really interesting things and really diverse things and so i'd love to see what you think down below so the alchemist is actually an archetype that really has been missing from dungeons and dragons fifth edition and it's something that you would think would be somewhat obvious is a potion maker and someone who makes the magical potions you know you're always buying magical potions or finding them along the way during your adventure but who makes them? And so now we have a way of justifying who makes the potions. So this is pretty cool. Um, you definitely are going to be the big support in this in this subclass, being able to create potions of both healing and other buffs, that which we will talk about here in just a second, and be able to hand those out to your party and really keep them alive, keep them going, give them interesting buffs that maybe they wouldn't have had access to otherwise. Um, so you're you're pretty diverse in, in what you can do here. Um, as far as throwing potions that are gonna blow up in people's faces, this really isn't that kind of a subclass, although you can reflavor some of the spells on the spell list in order to make it fit that. And so we will talk about that here in just a second as well. But yeah, you do have interesting ways of reflavoring things if that's what you're going for. Somebody who throws potions around and they blow up on either allies for healing or enemies for something negative. And so, yeah, you can just kind of do whatever you want with this one. There's there's a lot of flexibility in flavoring here. And so that definitely can lead to some really cool roleplay moments. So let's go ahead and see what this thing gets. So at level three, we actually get three different abilities, which is pretty cool. And the first one is a proficiency in alchemist supplies. Makes sense. Fits the flavor, definitely helpful. But again, like I said in the previous video, tools really aren't all that amazing in fifth edition. And so, yeah, it, it, it's pretty dependent on how your dungeon master wants to rule it and how helpful he or she would like to be with it. So, you know, this could be decent depending on your DM, but usually it's going to be kind of mediocre. So I, I'm gonna have to give this a four out of 10. It's just not gonna come up all that much, at least by using the tools. Next, we get our expanded spell list. Now this spell list has some interesting options on it, and we actually get a total of 10 spells that are spread out throughout the entire progression of 20 levels. They are always prepared, and they do not count against our number that we are normally restricted to uh, as far as preparing them as an artificer. And there are definitely some standout options here, such as Healing Word and then later Mass Healing Word. Um, and I also really like Flaming Sphere, Cloud Kill and Raise Dead. Um, this is the only Artificer that gets access to Raise Dead, so that can be pretty useful. Um, however, we already get Revivify on our list, so you you'd have two options now as far as as far as helping a a dead party member come back to life. But you know, Revivify is pretty strict in in the timing, and Raise Dead gives you a little bit more time there, and you always have it prepared. So, you know, it's better to have it and not have to use it. But you know, if something really goes sour and your cleric is way too far away to be able to do anything, then maybe you can jump in and and be that, and you will definitely be uh, you'll definitely be. A little bit a little bit more useful than normal by having that so that's pretty cool um, I also really like flaming sphere in combination with the spell storing item that we discussed that we get at a level 11 and it's pretty interesting because it's a bonus action to control it after the action to cast it and it is the concentration of the caster which can be your fighter, which can be your paladin, which can be anything like that that maybe doesn't have a way to really weaponize their bonus action effectively, um, or just doesn't really have any kind of bonus action much of anything. This gives them something to do, which is just a bunch of extra damage. So it's pretty cool, I like it. Um, however, there are several on here that I'm just, I wouldn't really take, um, or I wouldn't really ever use. Like they're prepared, but I, I wouldn't really use them. Um, so overall, I'm gonna give this a six out of 10. 
Finally, level three, we get Experimental Elixir. Now, what this does is it actually gives us the ability to make magical potions, and this serves as kind of the crux of this entire subclass. When you create a potion here, after a long rest, you can produce one of six different effects. And as you can see on this table here, this is what you roll and you create one of these magically. Uh, you get to make extras at level six and at level 15, you get two and three of the, at those levels respectively. And the effects kind of vary in usefulness from slightly improved potion of healing to increased walking speed, uh, basically giving a dose of bless which is pretty cool um, or a pretty slow flight speed which are all pretty decent things I mean you know all, all of these things are pretty nice um, you can add one to AC with one of these as well so that can be pretty handy as well um, none of these abilities here are bad but they are definitely pretty tamed um, that nothing here seems really busted and strong um, and most of them are just spells that have just been kind of brought back and I mean one of them even says you're just casting alter self so I mean you know it, it recognizes that you're basically casting spells that are a little bit lighter in, in what they can do but you do also lose the concentration aspect of it so that's also pretty good I mean being able to being able to lose that is is really really nice um, now what I would have liked to seen here and what would have made this a lot better is if it scaled because none of this scales um, and the big the big thing that's really nice about this is if you use a spell slot you can actually create more of them and you get to choose which ones you get at that point so what I would like to have seen is you say you use a first level spell slot and that creates something on the table. We'll say at third level, second or third level, you can start creating more potent uh, healing spells. Maybe the flying speed increases, maybe the AC goes up a little bit more for however long. Um, and, and you've got these, these different boosts that can scale up and get even better as you level up. And that would definitely make things a lot more intuitive um, and definitely have this have a lot more lasting power. So this is going to be really nice at low levels. At higher levels, it's not going to be nearly as good, especially since you can't stockpile these. Um, once you once you drink it, it's gone. And once you take a long rest, it's also gone. So you can't just hold up for a week and have a bunch of these different things. Um, no, they're, they're gone at the end of each day. So it, it is a little tough in that way. And so I'm going to have to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, it definitely could be higher if if they lasted longer if you could stockpile them but that would be kind of broken um, or if they scaled um, and, I, and I think that with some light scaling at the cost of higher spell slots would have been really really nice here so unfortunately we're gonna give it a 7 out of 10 at fifth level you get the power alchemical savant and so what this does is it allows you to boost the damage dealt with acid fire necrotic and poison damage and your healing spells equal to your intelligence modifier so this is pretty good as far as adding a little bit of extra damage and a little bit of healing you know it's not an amazing amount because i'm you know I assume at this level you're probably at at least an 18 if not a 20 because you've had a chance to take an ability score improvement by level 5. But at the same time there's one little thing in the wording that makes it a lot less uh, tempting than it would be normally and this is that it only works on the first creature. So if you use something like cloud kill that could affect in theory a bunch of different people it only works on one of them so you're only getting at that point five extra damage per turn um and so that's that's a little bit a mm, it's not great it's not great however we are going to be comboing this in in this build here we're going to be talking about um how to how to make the most use out of something like this and i think that you guys will really really like it um, but so it's also really good with some things like healing word and mass healing word on this um, that could definitely come into play um, and definitely raises the stock of those spells so um, you know it helps 
but it's very limited. So I've got to give it a six out of 10. It's good, but it's very limited. If you could use it on against multiple creatures in one go, this would definitely have gone up by at least two, probably to an eight out of 10. Um, yeah, it, it could have been way, way better, but they did limit it. And so I've got to stick with the six. So at level nine, you get restorative reagents. And so what this does is it allows you to give temporary hit points equal to 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier when someone drinks one of your experimental elixirs. Also, you can now cast Lesser Restoration without using a spell slot. That's pretty good. So 2d4 plus your intelligence modifier is normally the potion of healing that you are giving to people. And so this just adds another 2d6 plus intelligence modifier to that in temporary hit points, which is pretty cool. Now keep in mind that these hit points do not stack, so you can't just give two of your experimental elixirs because you're making two of them now, assuming you get two healing potions or you use spell slots in order to get two healings. You will get 2d4 plus 2d6 plus 10 in healing total. However, Temporary hit points are going to go on there, and if you drink another one, those temporary hit points are going to change to just whatever number you rolled in temporary hit points. You don't get to add them every time you drink one of these potions or get them from any other source. So definitely keep that in mind. You can't end up with something like 40, 50 uh, temporary hit points just because you kept drinking potions. Does not work that way, um, and because that would be insanely strong. Um, and again, this doesn't scale, so as you reach really high levels, it's not going to be as powerful as it could be. 2d6 plus intelligence, so 2d6 plus 5 isn't terrible. I mean, that's an average of like 11-ish damage, um, or healing rather. And so, you know, it's helpful. Um, and so, and, and it's definitely not a bad thing at all. Um, I just I just see somebody with, instead of a bunch of hand grenades strapped to a belt across their chest, I see a bunch of healing potions that you're just kind of throwing at people. Um, and it's just given them, it's given a really cool way to boost them up like that. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. It's, it's definitely pretty cool. Um, being able to give out temporary HP is always a good thing. Um, and so I think it's, I think it's really, really nice. Finally, at 15th level, we get Chemical Mastery. Now, with this power, we actually become immune to the poison condition and are resistant to both acid and poison damage. Not too bad. Uh, poison is pretty common. Acid, not so much, unless you're facing a specific dragon that you know you're going to fight, and then you're like, yeah, I'm resistant to that. Great. Uh, otherwise, you're really not going to face it all that much, but poison is pretty common. So um, this is pretty good, but also at level 15, how many creatures are you fighting that are using poison on you and not like radiant and fire and because you're fighting like angels and demons and craziness like that. So, you know, you'll run into it. It'll come up, but it's not super good by, by getting it this late, um, but it's not terrible. And you also get to cast greater restoration and heal without using a spell slot or components. This is good. This is really good. Because heal is a six level spell that you normally would never be able to have access to because you know you only go up to fifth level spells. And heal is a really good spell. Giving 70 HP flat, that can completely change the game. Um, th that's very, very good to have um, and definitely helps you to have a little bit of that cleric-y feel to it. So it's it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. So I'm actually going to give this a 9 out of 10, which is pretty cool. Gaining resistance to two damage types, one of them being pretty useful, and then getting access to Greater Restoration, which you already have on your spell list, but now you get to save a spell slot and being so limited in your spell slots, it's nice to be able to cast a high level spell like this without using one and heal, which you normally would never get, but now you do and you can use that to really, really help the party. This is a nine out of 10 for me. This is a really, really good power. So let's take a look at all that we have here. That is all of the powers granted to the alchemist. And honestly, it's pretty cool as far as flavor. Um, you've got a lot of different ways that you can go with it. Um, it gives you a really nice support and utility option. Um, so you can be giving out these uh, potions to everybody and giving little buffs here and there um, and help them to heal, to stay in the fight or 
give them a little bit of a tactical advantage. Um, now, where it falls short for me, though, is the scaling and the lack thereof. Um, the abilities here are pretty good in the right situation, and it can be a decent build, but we're missing several things here, such as extra attack, which are granted by some of the other subclasses. Um, we're all also missing things better than heal as far as healing spells, and we lack the you know, mid-range spell slots. And so upcasting spell slots is for healing is kind of tough. So you're not gonna be the necessarily the best healer. Um, you're more of a support character. And so it, it's an interesting play style. It's a little bit different. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't quite stack up to the other options presented that we will be talking about in later videos. Um, so overall, this is a six out of 10 for me. Um, it, it's, it's decent. It's definitely not useless by any means. Um, and I definitely think that it's worth playing, but just know that you're going to get a little bit more out of the other subclasses. All right. So now that we know all that is available to the alchemist, let's build one. So we're going to actually take and build an alchemist from level one to level 20 and go through what I would do in, in this example build. Now, keep in mind, I have a couple of rules when it comes to me building these in this specific one. Number one, we are not necessarily going for the ultimate super overpowered kind of thing. That, that's not what we're going for here. Um, it, th this is not the build guide for that. There will be in the future build guides that are meant to just push the boundaries of what a character can be, um, but that will not be in this video. In this video, we're going for simplicity and we're going for something that's very accessible for someone who may not know about character building all that much. This is a great way for you to start. And then of course, you're welcome to customize things as you go. So this, this is just an example build. Um, so. Yeah, we're, we're gonna just keep it simple as far as that goes. Next, as far as keeping it simple, we are only going to multi-class into one other class at maximum. And so, you know, we are going to allow multi-classing in this, but we will only be using one other class. In addition, we are only going to be dipping, at least by definition, into another class and subclass we can take a maximum of nine levels of a different class and subclass, but the majority of the build must be the example that we are using in the video. This is gonna present me from building two of the exact same characters maybe later on as far as mechanically speaking. And so this also just makes sure that we are featuring exactly what we are here to feature. So yeah, for, for this um, and for all of my build guides, it's going to be 11th level and then we have the option to, to change over. Now, keep in mind, we do not necessarily have to take 11 levels in a row. We can split it up as we want, but we have to take at least 11 levels by the time we reach level 20. Now, last, we are going to also be starting with level one in the particular class. So we are not going to start in a different class in order to pick up a bunch of proficiencies and then move back over. Uh, that's that's not something we're gonna do in these build guides again We will be making separate build guides later for more of your like power builds and more of your um, Just being able to do crazy stuff that will be later on this again is for simplicity and about featuring the subclass that is the in the video So just wanted to get some of those rules out of the way and so let's go ahead and uh, Let's go ahead and look at what I've come up with for this build so as far as ideas for this build, um, I, I bounced around several ideas. Um, there is, of course, the very famous chef build that everybody likes to run around with in order to attempt to make the chef feat worth taking. We're not doing that. Um, that is, it's been it's been done and done and done over and over and over. And so I'm I'm not I'm not going to do that. Um, I also considered a. Uh, like traveling salesman that sells the little like little elixirs and um, just sells them out of the back of this little cart kind of thing and so somebody who with a lot of charisma and that sort of thing so I, I considered something like that but then I decided no we're gonna just go the completely different direction and we're gonna be a crazy gnome that lives in the woods um, and so this is going to be our crazy gnome that lives in the woods that uses a combination of illusion magic and alchemical and mechanical traps in order to catch animals in the wild for food. Um, so 
the very basic story is, you know, this gnome used to live in a in a village with other gnomes and it was wiped out by a bunch of, you know, either people or animals or beasts or craziness, whatever. This is the only one that survived, lives out in the woods by himself and had to teach himself how to survive out here and and learned a little bit about illusions and how to how to deal with uh, deal with threats via traps either mechanical or chemical which is pretty cool so um it's it's interesting so now he's very protective of his land and now he has to leave it for some reason maybe something else is attacking his little bit of land and his traps aren't able to cut it so he's looking for some help and then maybe just ends up sticking around with the party maybe that's uh Maybe that's what it is. So yeah, obviously with this, um, the flavor of it is going to be very much up to you, but I'm doing this just so that I can set up which background I'm taking. And so that's the only reason we're gonna go into depth at least any little bit of, of the background. Otherwise the background mechanically um, is the only thing that we're really worried about in these builds. So let's go level by level and build this thing. So first of all, we're going to look at our ability scores. And because we are an artificer, we are going to be making intelligence our highest score. Now we're going to be using an improved standard array here, which is going to be 17, 15, 13, 12, 10 and 8. Obviously ask your dungeon master how he or she prefers to do stats. Some may be rolled, some may be the regular standard array, and some may be point by, or you may have another system entirely to follow. It is completely up to your DM what he or she wants to do there, and so make sure you follow those rules. Um, but for consistency here over all of the characters, we're going to be using this so that, you know, some characters don't have an 18 where I rolled an 18 or maybe some have a bunch of sixes and then that feels really bad because it has bad stats. We're gonna make them consistent across the board and that way nothing feels underpowered as far as stats go. Um, if they feel underpowered, it's strictly because of their abilities. So our top stat is obviously going to be intelligence. This helps us with our spell attack bonus and our saving throw DC. Um, you're gonna be using your saving throw DC much more often than your attack bonus outside of one of your infusions, which we will talk about here in a little bit, which we will be taking. Um, but besides that, you really are gonna be using your spell save DC a lot on this character. And so you really wanna pump that up as much as you can or find a way to impose disadvantage on the saving throws, which is definitely something that we're gonna be looking into and we are going to achieve with this character as well. So we've got a really interesting, interesting way of doing that. And you know, if you're excited for finding out what that is, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't yet. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and look at the rest of our stats here. We're putting our second stat into Dex, and so Dex is actually going to be really nice for helping with our armor class, which is pretty low, and that's going to help improve it a little bit more. And we are going to be also looking at optimizing this a little bit more as we go. And then third is going to be Constitution, so this helps with our HP and our ability to maintain concentration. We are not doing this as stat number two because we do have proficiency with Constitution saving throws and we also have the option of taking things like resilient and we can also get an amulet of health later on down the line we can just make one ourselves and so this can really really help and that will definitely um, cover for our weakness in that stat but uh, for now at least um, having the proficiency in the saving throws is going to be more than enough um, at least for low levels. And so this is something that, that you can get by with for now and then improve later. Um, so fourth, we're gonna go with wisdom. This helps with the saving throws on wisdom. And yeah, you're gonna face these a lot. So this definitely is gonna be your next stat. And then we're basically just gonna dump strength and charisma. Um, we'll go ahead and put the 10 in strength and the eight in charisma. We live out in the woods, we don't talk to people. Our charisma is gonna be pretty bad. And so that's definitely gonna be our dump stat. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do with our stats. So let's go ahead and look at what race we're gonna take. So for this build, I decided to go with a gnome and more specifically a forest gnome to fit the theme. And this does a couple of things. This actually helps us in getting a plus two to intelligence. So we're gonna actually go from 17 to 19 immediately, which is really good. Um, it also gives us a plus one to dexterity, which is really, really nice, getting us up to a 16, also raising that bonus, which is good. And it also gives us a walking speed of 25 feet, 
Dark Vision, Gnome Cunning, which is advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws against magic, which is very useful, um, and a couple of languages that we can that we can take here. Um, and so we also learn the Minor Illusion Cantrip, and we also get to speak with beasts, which is kind of, you know, here or there, it's, it's good sometimes. But taking Minor Illusion is really good, because one of the big weaknesses of the Artificer is the lack of cantrips and so we're actually going to be doing a build here where we're going to get a bunch of cantrips and actually a lot more than what we really need but it's fine so you know feel free if you're doing a build like this to you know switch out some of the powers or switch out some of these cantrips but um, i'm doing this to kind of get a bunch of cantrips so we just have a bunch of options um, and like i said far from optimized but just for fun, right? So for our background, we're actually gonna go with the Outlander. So again, not optimized because this gives us a, uh, a strength-based one in athletics and survival. Now survival's good. Um, survival definitely fits the theme, which is really, really nice. It gives us a musical instrument, which is going to be bagpipes as always. Why would you not take bagpipes? I mean, it's bagpipes. So we can just say it's, you know, a hide of an animal that we've killed out in the out in the wild and then just some sticks that we've whittled throughout the throughout the time of being in the woods and we made our own we made our own bagpipes and we made them it's great it'll be fine um, we also get one extra language which is really cool um, now this language is completely up to you depending on your setting so sometimes this will be good to have giant it'll be good to have elvish it'll be good to have uh, dwarvish it'll be good to have a bunch of different things it just depends on what your setting is and what fits thematically with this with the scene and so I'm just gonna put elvish here but it can be whatever you want it to be um, just make sure that you check to see what's most relevant to your campaign and try to take that instead um, we also get a staff a hunting trap a trophy of an animal that we killed and a set of traveler clothes and a pouch with 10 gold finally we get the wanderer feature which is pretty neat we have a good sense of terrain and finding our way in the wilderness and we also can find food and water more easily it's interesting it's to me it's not super useful to me it, it's not anything like what sailor is where sailor allows you to actually get free passage on a ship but just by talking to people because you know your way around a boat um, with this it just says you're more likely to find things and so it's it's very much up to dm discretion um you know we're choosing it for flavor here obviously but yeah this definitely is one for for dm discretion so feel free to mess around with this and um and see what what is most useful for you all right, so now we actually get to take our first level into Artificer, which is really, really cool. So we get the D8 hit die, so we're gonna have a whopping 10 HP to start out, always great. Um, and we also pick up all the proficiencies that we discussed, and for skills, we're actually gonna go with Perception and Nature, which is pretty cool. So we have Nature and Survival now. So we're pretty good out in the woods, and for exploration purposes, we're doing all right. So it, it fits pretty well. As far as equipment, we get two simple weapons. I'm just gonna take two spears here. Um, now spears, according to a recent errata, actually do work with Polearm Master. So it's, it's something we're not actually gonna be taking in this build, but it's something you could consider. Um, since it's not a strength-based build, um, we're not gonna be taking it or focusing on using the spears. They're just kind of an alternative if you need a melee weapon um, or something that you can throw. And it also has the versatile feature, so you can actually get a little bit more damage on it if you just use two hands. So it's good, it's versatile. It's a little bit better than the javelin as far as being flexible. Um, and it gets Polearm Master, which is good, but we're not gonna be taking that in this one. Um, we do also get the Light Crossbow, which is really cool. Um, and this is going to be something that we're gonna use quite a bit. I mean, a crossbow is great for hunting, and so I definitely can see uh, our hunter using this and actually is a good candidate for the repeating shot infusion. However, we're not actually gonna be taking that on this build as it's not as useful as uh, to us as it is on something with extra attack um, or 
if you're using two hand crossbows crossbow expert but it's not really all that great here um so yeah it's it's not as good as it could be here and like i said in the future we will be making an entire video on just the infusions and so yeah repeating shot is really good when it's really good and it's completely useless when it's completely useless so it just depends on it just depends on the situation here it is not going to be one that we're taking um, but it's definitely you know if you want to have that flavor cool you can have that flavor it's neat as far as armor we chose the studded leather armor um, i didn't want the disadvantage on stealth and although you can create a cloak of elven kind at level six i don't want to be going through the first five levels just clunking around everywhere in in the scale mail um, and it really doesn't offer you all that much of a boost it, it gives you one more ac you go from 15 to 16 and so it's really not that huge of a difference and it to me the difference of one eight the one ac is not enough to justify disadvantage on every stealth check so i don't want to be ruining all of the rogues plans all of everybody else who isn't wearing heavy armor um, i would rather not be ruining all their plans just because i'm i wanted one extra to my ac so yeah i, I don't think that it's i don't think that it's all that worth Worth it on this build specifically but don't worry we'll be taking some more armor in uh, in the future so um, yeah so we're just gonna say that you know it was we made it ourselves out of the hide of like an owl bear or, or something else that we've killed out in the wild um, we also get thieves tools and a dungeoneers pack which is pretty cool and so we get an AC of 12 plus Dex which ends up being a 15 so yeah, that's uh, it's, it's decent. It's not terrible for for level one, um, but definitely we will be working on making that just a little bit better. So at first level, we're going to grab two features, which are the magical tinkering and the spell casting. Again, for all of these general features of the classes, make sure to check out the general class guide, which I posted last week. That will be up in the I card above right there. And so you can always watch that. And so that goes into detail on what each of these things do. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail about what each of these things do in, in this video because I've already I've already talked about it there. So make sure you check that out and then come back here. Um, so we get those two things and we also get two cantrips, which is pretty cool. So we're actually going to grab Mage Hand and Mending here at the beginning. Um, so Mage Hand is, of course, Mage Hand. It's really, really good and it's always applicable no matter who you are. Um, one of the best cantrips in the game. Some people would argue that it is the best in the game. Very, very useful, very versatile. Awesome, awesome, awesome cantrip. Um, mending is going to be more useful at level two, but for right now it doesn't really do a whole lot, but we're gonna go ahead and take it while we can. Um, as far as the rest of our spells, what's really nice is we don't have to commit to anything. Um, it's just daily we can switch things out. Um, and we can prepare four first level spells at level one, given our current stats. Um, some good options here are going to be Absorb Elements, Catapult, Cure Wounds, Disguise Self, for instance. Um, and you also have things like Fairy Fire and Tasha's Caustic Brew, which I think are pretty, pretty cool things to take here at the beginning. So definitely consider those, but know that you can switch them out if you need to. Um, and definitely don't be afraid of switching your spells out every day and trying new things. It's what it's there for. Um, so definitely, definitely do that. And, um, you know, you also have identify, which is cool that you can cast by using a ritual and not using up a spell slot, which can be super nice. Um, it can be super nice to, to have that. If you don't have say a wizard that is doing it out of the book, um, you definitely can, um, can be the one who does that. Um, if you want to pack it for a day. Um, maybe you pick up a bunch of stuff the day prior, the next day you pick up Identify, cast it as a bunch of rituals in the morning, um, and then you basically just haven't used any spell slots, but now you know what everything is. So definitely useful to have that in your back pocket. Um, I, I really, I really like that. At level two, we get to infuse items, which is cool. We get to choose four infusions and have two of them active at once. Um, for this build, I'm going to take Enhanced Weapon, Enhanced Armor, Homunculus Servant, and Replicate Magic Item for a Bag of Holding. Um, so these are all super useful here and some of the top tier infusions. Um, like I said, I'm going to be making a video in the future about all of the infusions and ranking those on a scale of one to 10 as well. Um, there are definitely some standout options and 
definitely some not so standout options. And you are also going to definitely see me use some of the lesser used ones as the builds go on. Um, as far as this build, we're gonna be using pretty much the strongest ones. Um, and then as we go on, I'm gonna find interesting ways to use some of the maybe the lesser used ones. Um, and, and you'll definitely you'll definitely see an interesting way of using those. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, we now have a bag of holding at level two. We have our homunculus servant, which is really, really awesome to have. And it's why we took mending. So it makes the mending cantrip worth using. So let's see what we get at level three. At level three, we get our experimental elixir and all of our other uh, subclass spells and the ability to have the extra proficiencies. And then we also get right tool for the job. So we can now make potions and switch out our tools. Pretty neat. So at level four, we actually get to take our first ability score improvement or feat. Um, here, we're actually going to take a feat instead of getting our intelligence up to 20. That's what we're going to do on our next one. But I wanted to take this for the flavor and to have it early because this can actually be interesting. It, it can be pretty cool to have at level four. Now, this is not the strongest feat in the world by any means. Um, we will also be ranking all of the feats eventually, um, but we're gonna take Poisoner. Now, Poisoner, it was a, a new one introduced in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that actually allows you to create poison arrows for your crossbow and bypass the poison resistance. So this allows you to do a little bit of extra damage with your crossbow as long as they fail their constitution saving throw. And you can poison your opponent, which is pretty cool. Uh, poison is a really good condition, and I, I think it's really nice. And keep in mind, at level six, we get our proficiency bonus doubled to to what will be a plus six at the time, and that will only scale. So, you know, our ability to pass the DC check to create poison with the Poisoner's Kit is going to be pretty nice. And if you don't have a Poisoner's Kit, we have right tool for the job. And so you can switch out for a Poisoner's Kit and make a bunch of poison arrows. So it's pretty cool. All of this kind of combos together and, and definitely works out. Um, yeah, it's it's neat. And we also now get Ray of Sickness in our uh, expanded spell list, and that makes that a little bit more relevant as well in the case of bypassing resistance. So there are a lot of things that resist poison, a lot of things. And being able to get around it is pretty nice because you've got a lot of poison stuff in this build. Um, so definitely adding the Poisoner feat is pretty cool. And we're also going to just for flavor purposes here, say that the poison that we create is something that we can ingest and it will not hurt us. Um, just for the sake of, you know, because we're trapping things and using this poison to kill them. And then if we ate it and killed ourselves with the poison, that would be stupid. Um, and so if you think that this is terribly unreasonable, you haven't seen Princess Bride. <laughs> All right, so at level five, we're going to go ahead and start multi-classing, and this is where things get interesting, right? So I, I bounced around several ideas. Um, I, I originally considered taking a level of cleric, um, and that would help us to get access to some more spells, which is nice, but even more so, maybe pick up heavy armor proficiency, maybe pick up um, just some more abilities to heal. Um, Cleric is such a good one level dip because you only, you you get all of your subclass features at level one. And so Cleric is really, really good here, but I ended up deciding against it. And we're gonna go kind of vanilla for this and actually dip into wizard. And so that way we don't have to worry about splitting our stats anyway. Um, you've got everything in intelligence, and so you're good as far as that goes. And so basically it's like maybe one of the people that we found in the woods was a wizard. And then because wizards are super squishy, we got the best of them and um, and got their spell book. And so this allows us to pick up some really awesome spells um, that we would not get access to otherwise. This is going to pretty much double our amount of cantrips so far and it's gonna get even better later when we when we take another level. Um, but so we're gonna get three cantrips from the wizard's spell list, and so we're going to actually take Shocking Grasp, which I think now is a good time to take it, um, and this is going to allow your homunculus servant to also have a, uh, a melee option. 
Um, this also gives you a melee option, which is pretty cool. Um, Shocking Grasp is pretty nice. I, I like it. Um, and so we are also going to grab Prestigitation for utility and finally Toll the Dead. Um, Toll the Dead is an amazing cantrip that you typically see on a lot of clerics and wizards. And it's it's a good amount of damage for a, for a cantrip. It's it's really, really nice. And it scales. And so that's that's great. We're looking for things that scale based on level rather than necessarily level in a specified class. And so that way, just as we get stronger, that cantrip gets stronger and its stock stays relevant. And so that's why this is a really, really good one to keep. Um, so we also then get six first level spells on the wizard list. This is where things are awesome. Um, and you, we also now have the flexibility of taking scrolls and writing those down later or using scrolls if we need to. Um, and so we've got some interesting things that we can do here. Um, so here are my six picks. And again, you can take you can take whatever you want here. But my six picks are going to be Charm Person, Identify. And yes, we're double taking Identify. But this, and again, assuming that no one else has it, um, this allows us to just do it as a ritual without having to have it prepared. And so this allows us to always be able to take something else on our artificer list and always have identify ready to go. You could definitely argue for having a different spell. And if you think so, take it. Great. Take it instead. Um, any kind of other ritual that you wanted to take, um, there are plenty of others that, uh, that you could take here that would be just as useful. Um, we're also going to take shield shield is a must have on this on this subclass i mean just our, our ac is not ever going to be insane i mean we're at 16 with with our enhanced defense at the moment um and that'll go up to 17 later and we will we'll be able to mess with it a little bit more um with some of the other infusions that we get but uh, being able to take shield and get a plus five is amazing. Um, we're going to take sleep, which is going to be really, really nice here at the early levels. And Tasha's hideous laughter, which I really like for incapacitating an enemy for at least a little bit. And then thunder wave. Um, thunder wave is a really, really nice spell that can help with getting people off of you if you do not like them being super close to you. And this one really isn't all that much of a frontliner. So this is definitely a really nice option of get off me. Now we can only prepare five of these as, as a wizard at this rate. And so we can cast all of them, but identify and identify. We can just cast as a ritual. So there you go. We're covered. Um, alarm is also a really good option if somebody else has identify. Um, but what we're looking at even more so than all of that is arcane recovery. Arcane Recovery allows us to take a spell slot and recover it on a short rest. And we are limited we to first level spell slots because it is uh, your wizard level halved and then rounded up. So we get one first level spell that we can do. However, this combos with our ability to create potions. And so what we can do is actually take the spell slot that we used to make the potion of our choice and get it back on a short rest. So it's as if we didn't do it. It's as if we didn't create that potion and we get that potion for free. And all we have to do is take a short rest, which is really, really good. Um, definitely combos well with our lack of, of options and lack of spell slots. So definitely really, really nice. Um, I'm, I'm super, super pumped about that. So at level six, we get Alchemical Savant, which is good. We're gonna be upping our damage of all of those different types, which is definitely gonna be helping out, especially with our poison arrows that ignore resistance. We also have things like Ray of Sickness that are really, really nice. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of really good things here that we're gonna be adding our intelligence modifier to the damage. So it can start adding up with, with all of these different things that we're that we're working with here. And of course, having the uh, the possibility of poisoning people is really nice as well. Um, we also get access to second level spells, which is good. Um, as far as the standouts go, I'm gonna go with Aid, Blur, Enhance Ability, uh, Heat Metal, Invisibility, Rope Trick, Spider Climb, and Web. Those are the top ones for me for various different reasons. Um, keep in mind, again, these can be swapped out daily. So if you think one will be good this day and not good another, that's fine. You can just swap it out for whatever you want. 
At level seven, we get tool expertise. So now we're better at picking locks and making poison, which is pretty cool. Um, we also get to pick up two more infusions and one more can be active. Now that we are at this level, we are going to take the spell refueling ring for sure. And then the other one here is kind of a throwaway. Um, there's not as much here to take that is um, super busted for this, um, but I chose the Lantern of Revealing. So this allows us to see things that are invisible, which is really nice. We do also have Fairy Fire. So they do kind of compete a little bit, but the Lantern of Revealing I think is a little bit more widely applicable. And of course not using a spell slot is great. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take that as well. We also get one more Artificer Cantrip. And so Message is good for utility. Guidance is good for buffing. And uh, finally we've got Thorn Whip if you wanted a, a damaging one and a little bit of uh, battlefield control being able to move people around. So, you know, you could take any of those options. Any of those would be really helpful for you. So at level eight, we get Flash of Genius. This allows us to help our allies in making their saving throws. So always good to have. So at level nine, we get to take another ability score improvement or feat. And this time we're gonna take the ability score improvement. Um, I'm going to take a plus one to intelligence and a plus one to constitution, bumping each of these scores up by one and getting our intelligence to 20. So that is definitely really, really clutch. And to have it by level nine, I think is totally fine. Um, now you could also make the case for taking Warcaster here. Um, uh, and, and originally on the build, I had Warcaster here. However, uh, I do think that having the proficiency in constitution saving throws is going to be really clutch for you. And so I think we can wait and take Warcaster a little bit later. We're definitely going to take it, but it's going to be at the next ability score improvement. And I think, I think getting us up to the, uh, up to the 20 in intelligence is going to just be a little bit more important. So at level 10, we get restorative reagents, which is good. We get magic item adept at level 11 and spell storing item at level 12. Along the way, we also get two more infusions and we're going to take the cloak of protection and the winged boots. These are just awesome. Uh, the cloak of protection, of course, helping us with our AC and the winged boots, we can fly. So yeah, this is, it's insane. It's useful on anybody, any class, any build, anything, you can fly. It's amazing. We also now get third level spells. So my top three are Fly, Glyph of Warding, and Haste. And these are all really, really nice. We also have Revivify if no one else is packing that. So at level 13, we're gonna actually jump back to Wizard and take our second level of Wizard. And we actually get to choose our subclass here and we're going to choose the School of Illusion. So this is going to actually improve our Minor Illusion, which is cool that we got from our race. And so this is going to allow it to do a little bit more and be a little bit more convincing and we get to pick up an extra cantrip because we already have minor illusion so here we're going to actually go ahead and grab poison spray as a little bit more of a, of a damaging cantrip um, yeah so i mean by now it's 3d12 on a failed constitution save and you can't resist it so that's really cool in addition here is where the here is where it gets interesting now that we have third level spells, which is what I was waiting for before I took the second level of wizard, we are going to take the spell Bestow Curse. Bestow Curse is a touch spell, so our homunculus servant can actually deliver it. And that is why I wanted to use that in combination. So Bestow Curse has the ability to actually give disadvantage on a saving throw of our choice. A lot of monsters have really good constitution saving throws, which is what poison saves against. So that's what makes poison pretty bad, at least against monsters. With bestow curse, we can give them disadvantage and we don't have to be the ones up there in front of them to do it. We can send in our homunculus. It can use that spell and we can then start firing off our poison arrows. We can start firing off these cantrips that do poison damage. Uh, we have a lot of different options as far as poison goes and it's all very useful and can't be resisted. Um, and so this is really, really nice. A really good way of getting around everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's 
pretty it's pretty awesome um, this also is definitely the time to take counter spell if you want it counter spell is of course one of the best spells in the game and so now you have access to counter spell shield and absorb elements so that's really really nice to have so definitely we're, we're helping to bolster those defenses quite a bit so from now on, we're actually going to be taking all of our levels in Artificer. We're only doing a two level dip in this build. In other builds, we will probably go a little bit farther. But for now, we're only doing two on this one. So at level 14, we get another ability score increase or a feat. And we're going to go back to the feats and take Warcaster. So Warcaster allows us to be better at concentrating on spells, which is something that we definitely are, are doing. Um, and, you know, we're also handing out concentration to our allies as well. So um, this is pretty awesome so that we don't lose ours, even if, you're, uh, even if your ally loses theirs, um, you can still keep doing what you're doing. So it's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, you are hardly ever going to lose your concentration with Warcaster and proficiency in constitution saving throws. It's just hardly ever going to happen. And that's why I think it's okay to wait till this late in the build to actually take it. Um, the proficiency is going to save you a lot more than you think. So it's definitely really, really nice. So at level 15, we actually get our first dead level as far as features, which is pretty insane to go 14 levels and have something that we're getting on every single level. That is not going to be the case for a lot of these builds. Um, but we get a lot of features with the Artificer, which is good. Um, and so we do, though, get fourth level spells here, which is really, really nice. Um, some of the standouts here are Arcane Eye, Elemental Bane, Freedom of Movement, Mordenkainen's Faithful Hound, and Oluk's Resilient Sphere. But even some of the other ones that I don't think are standouts are still good, um, at, at least. And so we've got a decent little list of spells here for fourth level, and I think almost any of them are really actually worth taking and using so definitely definitely give a good look at this at this spell list at level 16 we get magic item savant and so now we can actually get more magic items and we can use whatever magic items we want and so and then at 17 we get chemical mastery so now we get all of our resistances and we can't be poisoned and we get two more infusions so here we're going to take a ring of protection and an amulet of health so the amulet of health here is going to jack up our constitution and yeah you're literally never gonna lose concentration on a spell with these with the combination of the amulet of health and proficiency and warcaster you're you're just not i mean it's gonna be incredibly rare that you're ever gonna lose the uh that you're ever gonna lose it um we also get our final cantrip for the artificer list um and so we can just take whatever we didn't take at level seven we can just take another one of those guidance thorn whip um, any of those are fine um, by now you've really gotten most of what you really want um, and so now it's just kind of extras at this point. But yeah, I, I wanted to do a build where we get a bunch of cantrips, even if we don't need them. And, uh, and yeah, I think that this is a pretty interesting way to do it. All right, level 18, we get our final ability score improvement or feat. And we're actually going to take another ability score improvement here. Um, and we're going to get a plus two to dexterity. And so this is going to raise our AC by one more. And actually, given all of these infusions, we're actually going to be in an AC of 20, which is pretty good given what we've got as far as as far as armor goes. So we've got 12 plus our dex modifier, which is now four. And so that is getting us up to 16. We've got the enhanced armor giving us plus two. And then we've got two items in both the cloak and the ring giving us plus one each. So that gives us up to 20. So that's pretty good. Plus we've got counterspell shield and absorb elements. So we're definitely an, a unit at this point and, and tough to beat. Um, you know, obviously we're having to roll for counterspell pretty much every time. Um, but still, I mean, it could still work out. So yeah, I think I think it's still really, really potent. Um, it's it's really, really cool. So yeah, definitely, definitely what we're gonna do there. So at level 19, we get access to our fifth level spells finally. And we actually get access to seven spells on this list. So not very many spells, but we get animate objects, which is insane. Um, now, obviously a lot of other people have been able to do this for a while, but animate objects, 
is very good, even at high levels. And so this is definitely a, a great pick uh, for you to take here. And we also get our sixth attunement slot at level 20 and two more infusions. Um, for this one, I'm gonna take the Mind Sharpener and Helm of Awareness. And so this just gives you a little bit more of a buff, but like I said, with the previous one, I, I think we're gonna be focusing on AC here. Um, and this just gives us a really good defensive, uh, a good defensive build and helps you to keep your concentration going at all times and just be out there buffing people up and just making sure that you're not getting hit. So it's pretty nice. Um, and also at level 20, because of the multi-class, we actually pick up one sixth level spell slot. So we have the spell slot, but we don't have any spells that we know that are sixth level. So we have the ability to upcast certain spells, which is pretty cool. Um, it's it's nice. That's that's the, the perk of taking two levels of wizard. So there you go. It's pretty nice. So that's it. That's our build for the Alchemist in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So just like with any of these builds that are going to be having in these videos, they can be optimized even more. And I'm leaving that open to you in the comments down below. Let me know what you would do to make this even more busted. And let me know what you think of the flavor of this specific one. So I think it's a cool build. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and again, we're going for fun here. We're going for, for fun builds that are somewhat simple. And I want to make sure that everything is uh, is laid out for you so that it is easy to pick up the game if you aren't already playing it so that's that's it that's what we got so i hope you guys have an amazing day amazing week i hope you're looking forward to next week when we cover the armorer and uh it's it's gonna be a lot of fun the armorer is very interesting you get to live out your inner tony stark which is really awesome so be looking forward to that make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that and of course have a great week great day all the good things and we will see you later Bye-bye.